Hello, I'm Lewis, and these are my awesome geometric light panels, GeoLeaf. Now for a long time I have wanted some nano leaf panels, but the price of these has always been a little bit too high for me. So I figured I have a 3D printer, why not design some of my own? This is what I have come up with. Each lit panel costs about £3.40 in materials to make, and I think that's pretty good, especially as I don't think they look too bad. You can assemble the panels in any arrangement that you like to suit your own personal space. And there are other shapes which you can include as well, such as these square panels. I've offset the panels from the wall slightly, so you get this really cool back glow effect. The smarts for this project are housed in this small rectangular area here at the bottom. I'm using an ESP8266 controller to control these LEDs. The bulbs can also be programmed to mimic a Philips Hue light bulb or respond to Alexa commands. Alexa, turn off GeoLeaf. I'll share with you now how I made these panels. They're very easy to make for yourself. And as usual, you'll find links to all of the parts that you might need down in the description below. So let's have a look. You're going to need a roll of LEDs and connectors, some 3D printing filament, acrylic sheets, a power supply and barrel connector, some wire and T-splices for that wire, and bolts to assemble everything together. All of this is controlled by an ESP8266, a logic level shifter and a buck converter. To connect all of our electronic components together, you can use either a simple PCB board, which I have designed here for this project, or if you prefer, a piece of perforated board and a couple of five-way Wago star connectors. I'll show you both methods later in this video. Now the first thing we should do is print the sides of our triangles. I printed mine in 3D Jake's Eco PLA matte black, but you can use a different color if you'd prefer. The SCL files for the printable parts are all included in the description below. I am going to be making 14 panels. The next thing you'll need to do is cut some triangular shaped acrylic pieces that we'll use to help diffuse the light from our LEDs. I'm using some A4 sheets from which you can get free per sheet if you are in the UK, I can recommend Trent Plastics and you'll find links to both of these different acrylic sheets on their website in the description below. Now to know what to cut, we can take one of our triangle pieces and mark it on the sheet using a pencil. You'll need to lay it down so that the holes are facing the sheet and then you can trace around the inside of our shape. Now you should be able to get three of each of these triangles onto an A4 sheet. Now there are several different ways that you could cut your acrylic. I'm going to saw mine and because I have access to someone else's fret saw, I'm going to go use that now. Now that these are all cut, you can peel off the protective film and then glue these inside of our triangular walls. A few dabs of super glue into the corners works out just fine. Next up are our LEDs, which run around the inside of our triangle panels. The WS2811 LEDs, which we're using in this project, have one small microcontroller controlling every three LEDs along the strip. So it's very important you only cut it where there are markings showing that you can. We need about 40 centimeter length to go around the inside of our triangle, which is perfectly eight segments of three. Once you've cut these, 
we can then attach the small 10 centimeter connectors to the incoming side of the LEDs. This is represented by the small arrow printed along the strip. Also, don't forget to pay attention that the red wire on your connector is next to the 12 volt pin on the strip. We certainly don't want to muddle our power wires later on or we will damage something. Next, we can remove the protective backing on the rear side of our LED strips. You'll want to remove all of it before we fit it inside of our triangles, but leave the last centimeter or so still attached. This will make it a lot easier to slide into the other end of these connectors later on. Add a dab of glue to the connector and place it into the housing so that this 12 volt red wire is at the top of the connector. Press your LEDs firmly into place whilst working around the inside and keeping them close to the edge of the print as you can. Repeat this for all of our panels. Now you get to decide how you would like to lay out your panels. Don't forget that we're looking at it from behind at the moment so your layout design will be mirrored once you've hung it up onto the wall. Start with the first one's lead where you intend to connect the power and brains for the project later and then just make sure that as you add each additional triangle panel that its LED connector is up against the previous one like so. We can then print a base for each of our light panels. I highly recommend you do this in a white filament as this greatly increases the amount of light reflected towards the acrylic panel giving us a much better quality of diffusion. Lay out these backing pieces along the root of the panels so that the two protruding legs are always pointing towards the side the connector is. We can now take the first panel and pop out the two blanking plates on the two edges that is against two other triangles. You can then take the LED connecting cable from the next triangle and feed it back through this panel. This should then connect to the outgoing end of our LEDs in this panel. You can then use a dab of glue to fix the connector in place, leaving a gap between the bottom of it and our acrylic sheet to allow the light to get in underneath it and not cast a shadow from the front side. Take three M3 by eight bolts and use those to secure the back plate to the triangle's walls. Keep doing this to some more panels, but you'll also need to use two more bolts to connect it to the previous one. After you have done five though, we'll stop at the sixth one because we need to do something a little bit different to every sixth panel as we go along our project. Because the wires running along our LED strips are very long and very thin, as we go along the strip, the voltage starts to decline thanks to resistance. We can counteract this by injecting a boost of 12 volt power at several points along our LED panel project. To do this, solder two 10 centimeter long wires to the first 12 volt and ground pads just along from the connector. We will connect the other end of these two wires with the rest of the project's electronics later on. But for now, continue fitting the back of this panel and the next five before we stop at the 12th to add another two 10 centimeter wires to this panel. You can then carry on finishing off the rest of the project's back panels in the same fashion. Before we proceed with assembling the rest of the electronics for this project, I definitely need to say thank you to my patrons, which is this lovely list of people. They make it possible for me to keep creating and sharing these projects with you and everybody else. I'd also like to thank 3D Jake for supplying the filament for the project and Trent Plastics for contributing the acrylic sheets. Thank you. If you can and would like to help support this channel and these projects that I'm working on, please consider having a look at my Patreon page at patreon.com slash DIY machines. So now we can assemble the brains and electronics center for our project. The first thing we'll need to do is set our mini 360 DC to DC buck converter to output 
just over 5 volts. For this, you'll need to hook it up temporarily to your 12 volt power supply and multimeter as I have done here. You can then turn the potentiometer with a small screwdriver until your reading is just a smidge above 5 volts. We can then disconnect these electronics and set it aside for a short while whilst we focused on the next component, the ESP8266. To do this, simply connect it to your computer using a USB cable and then navigate to this web address using the Chrome web browser. Press the install button and then choose your board. Let it do its thing and then you can disconnect and set it aside for use later. A nice easy step. We will need two more 3D printed parts to enclose all of these electronics. These two parts are called the control base and the control cover. I printed mine with colours that match the rest of the project. So this was done in white and a matte black. As mentioned earlier, there are two different ways that you can connect all of the electronics for this project. Using either a small PCB board or a piece of perforated board. Now I'd highly recommend that you give the PCB a go. It's purpose designed for the project, easy to connect thanks to its labelling, and it's low cost and easy to order. I'll show you how. In the description below is a link to where you can order this design direct from the project's page on PCBWay's website. I've already preloaded all of the design and settings for you. If you're a new customer to PCBWay, they also have a promotion where you can get $5 towards your first order. And as a set of five PCBs for this project only costs $5 at the moment, you effectively only need to pay for the shipping. They also have delivery options starting from as little as $8. Or if you're in a hurry, try their express DHL shipping. I've done this before and some PCBs that I ordered on Monday arrived with me here in the UK by Thursday morning. That's pretty impressive. The components are simply placed through the holes in our PCB board, matching what the diagrams show you. Take good care to check the orientation of your components. The logic level controller has a little notch out on the right hand side as shown on the board and the Mini 360 will show you what sides are the inputs and the outputs on the underside of its board. The ESP8266 is installed with its USB port facing upwards. You can then flip the PCB over and solder the pins coming from the components. The DC barrel connector can then be fitted inside of our 3D printed enclosure before its wires are also soldered onto the PCB board. Next up, we'll connect our LEDs to the PCB. To do this, you need to trim off the connector of the end of the LEDs so you have five centimeters of lead remaining. We can then strip the end of these wires and solder them to the top section of our PCB. The white lead to ground, the green lead to the data, and the red lead goes to the 12 volt point. We will turn our attention back to the pairs of unconnected wires which we added to every sixth panel along the length of our project. For this, you're going to need to cut a length of your twin core wire, which is going to run from the PCB along the length of the project and just a little bit farther than the last pair of wires. We'll trim this to length once we've finished fitting them. One end of this dual core wire is then soldered to the PCB in one of the two power boost sections. Before we start threading this through the rest of the project, we can use four of our M3 by eight bolts to secure the PCB into the housing. And then this can be turned over and fitted to the rest of the project with a further two M3 by eight bolts. Our length of wire is then passed through all of the LED panels until we reach the sixth panel. Here, you'll want to pull apart the wires slightly where the sixth and the fifth panel are meeting and attach the first of our two-way Blyce connectors. There is a small diagram on the top of my connectors which show me which wire is connected to which. 
Now yours may be a little bit different, so it is worth checking before blindly following the way I've wired my one. Tuck your connector into the space between the two panels before trimming the pair of power injection wires to a more suitable length and then crimping them into the other end of the connector. We then repeat this again at the next pair of wires after continuing to thread our longer wire through the entire project. Attach the connector and you can trim any excess wire off here as this is the last point we need to inject power. You can then connect the two short wires going to our LED strip. We can now flip our project over and add the cover for the electronics on top of them. Congratulations, that's all of our wiring completed for this project. Next, we'll set up the software for our LEDs. Now, don't forget, I've already shown you how to do the PCB, but if you'd prefer to use a piece of perforated board or something of your own design, then you can find the electronics diagram for this project, along with instructions on using a perforated board, all written up on my website at diymachines.co.uk. Let's connect the power to our project next and start making some lights blink. Now the easiest way to connect to this project is to grab your smartphone and scan this QR code in the corner. This will connect you automatically to the project's ad hoc Wi-Fi network and bring up the configuration page for you. Now, if this doesn't work for you or you'd like to do it in a more traditional way, then you connect to its Wi-Fi hotspot, which is called WLED-AP. This has a default password of WLED1234 and once you're connected, you should navigate to 4.3.2.1 in your web browser, which will also bring up the same configuration page. From here, you should click on Wi-Fi settings. Enter the name and password for your Wi-Fi network into the top two boxes. Optionally, you can also enter an MDNS address used to access the configuration page later instead of an IP address. I chose to call mine geoleaf-office. Once you're done, scroll down to the bottom of the page and press save and connect. Reconnect your phone now to the same Wi-Fi network that you chose to connect your geoleaf project to. Navigate to the address you chose or the project's IP address. Once reconnected, go back to the configuration page and press LED preferences. The LED count should be the number of triangles you're using times by eight. So for my 14 panels, that is 112 LEDs. Set the maximum current to 3,500 milliamps. This is important to keep the current within the capabilities of the project as I have shown you how to build it. And then under hardware setup, change the color order of your LEDs to BRG, blue, red, and green. We can then verify that all of our settings are correct by heading back to the main page and cycling through those three primary colors, red, blue, and then green. I'll run you through some of the basic features of WLED next. Now, if you want to learn more about it, and there are absolutely loads of features that this software can do for you, then I suggest having a quick Google on Google or YouTube as there are plenty of high quality guides already out there. So let's take a quick look at what you can do with your project. At the very top is where you'll find the master brightness slider, which affects the brightness of the entire project. The first page that we have found ourselves on is the colors page. And this is where you can select which primary, secondary and tertiary colors are used by pressing on numbers 1, 2 or 3 and then choosing a new color using the controls found up above. Further down from the color tab, you can also find some pre-curated palettes of colors. The current effect running on your panels is known as solid. This one only uses the primary color so you won't see any of the changes you make to the secondary or tertiary colors show up on your project. So 
Let's go down to the effects page at the bottom of the app and try some of the other effects which incorporate more than just the first primary color. The additional slider that you can now find at the top alongside the brightness slider lets you adjust the speed of most of the effects, but not necessarily all of them. There are absolutely plenty of effects that you'll find here and it might take you just a few moments to find some of your favorites. You can of course mark them as a favorite and you'll have a shortcut to them in the favorites tab in the bottom right of the page. And at the top left is where you can find a shortcut to turn off and on the project. The instructions for integrating both Alexa or Philips Hue with your GeoLeaf project are available on my website as a written guide. This way, I'm able to keep these instructions bang up to date with any changes that may happen in the process over time. Alexa, set GeoLeaf to blue. Set GeoLeaf to red. Alexa, turn off GeoLeaf. So here is mine hung on the wall as you saw it earlier. I used some 3M command strips to secure mine. This is as simple as following the packet and has the advantage of not marking or making any holes in your wall. Ideal for if you're in rented accommodation. I've also designed some 3D printable anchor points, which you can use to secure yours with a screw if you prefer. There is already one mounting point inside of the control panel, which you've already printed. Now I must issue a few words of warning here. The first is that LEDs, certainly when you have a lot of them, draw a large amount of current when turned up to their full brightness. So you must use the software limitations in WLED to cap the maximum amount of current that you draw through your project. This will ensure that the wires don't get too hot or we damage the power supply. The same goes for adding additional panels to your project. If you leave the software limit in WLED applied, then as you add more panels and increase the number of LEDs in the software, then you'll only find that your maximum brightness is capped. Now you can increase the size and power used by your project if you know what you're doing or consult someone who does know what they're doing. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this project video. If you have, please don't forget to press the subscribe and like buttons found down below this video. I have some other projects which you might be interested in, such as this giant hidden shelf edge clock or my very easy to build Arduino powered CNC drawing machine. Thank you again for watching and until next time, ciao for now. LEDs which we're using in this project have one... Continue doing the same for the next five panels.